yeah so i'm yamna and i have uh, been given a brief description uh, ali has already introduced me and uh, now we'll swiftly move on to our topic of discussion and that would be uh, equality of uh, opportunity in tech but before we move on to equality of opportunity in tech i would definitely like to talk more about equality of opportunity in general that uh, uh especially women have i'll keep it uh, the equality of opportunity question to uh, more gender based even though i know that equality of opportunity is uh, is very is not only a sexist question it's an ableist question it's an ageist question it's a racist question and uh, we find discriminations in all forms and shapes so um uh, but to keep uh, but it would be really hard to discuss uh, all of those in detail so i'll just keep it uh, to the gender question uh, so when it comes to the gender question um very interestingly uh, 81% of men uh, of the total population of men are currently in are currently participating in active labor force uh, whereas only 24% of all, of the overall pop population of women is uh, currently participating in labor force in pakistan uh, these numbers are make my heart um, they are disappointing but uh they are uh to keep things in perspective in 1999 uh, only 13% of the overall population of women was uh actively participating um in labor force and uh, this kind of goes on to show the lack of opportunity in general that we have in the labor force like where uh women are uh still uh um not a part they do, do they do not have a career orientation as of yet uh, a, a good number a majority of women don't even if they are they have edu- they are educated or not even then they do not take part in the active labor force and uh, that is uh, pretty interesting because um this number just does not include the women who are your typical office going women or like who do the uh who do uh, professional jobs uh, this number also includes women who are who are your who are the part of uh, uh who are your housemaids who are working informally who are working um in your farms who are working uh, who are doing mazduri who are like all sorts of um, who are in your municipality like all sorts of um careers and uh, work is included in this active labor force number which is 24% now uh and that reminds me that uh, currently around 41 million women are doing unpaid work uh 41 million is a great number for the amount of women to not have um uh for be, to be doing work which they are not being paid for and this number is mostly comprised of uh, agricultural workforce uh 73% of agriculture workforce is women and uh, they are unpaid contributing members uh they are unpaid contributing family members to be more precise uh, uh these women uh, are could be underage as well these women are married as well these women are sisters mothers whoever of the the small farm owners these women are still contributing there and they uh, are raised to do that uh wahi pe unhone um sare jo kaam hai khet ke wo usme uh, active labor force mein wo wahan shamil hain aur ye baat mujhe bahut uh, ये नंबर ने मुझे बहुत सरप्राइज किया था एंड दिस सरप्राइज मी बिकॉज हम अक्सर जब बात करते हैं वुमेन लेबर फोर्स की तो हमारे दिमाग में वी थिंक ऑफ मोर नज़ाकत पे जो बेस्ड 
जॉब्स होती हैं मैंने एज इंजीनियर्स लाइक यू नो वुमेन आर टोल्ड के भाई आप सिविल इंजीनियरिंग या इस तरह की इंजीनियरिंग ना करें जिसके अंदर आपको बाहर धूप में खड़ा होना पड़े आपको बाहर जाना पड़े क्योंकि वुमेन आर नॉट वुमेन आर कंसिडर्ड फिजिकली वीक बट देन देर आर दीज वुमेन हुर हु आर who are a sheer uh, example of uh, how uh, how women are and a part of jo aapki mazdoor tabka hai uske andar bhi women kitna important part hai aur kitni unki existence ko neglect kar diya jata hai ye aurtein apne apne wazan ke se aadhe se zyada bojh utha ke kitni dur dur chalti hain kahan kahan se kaam ya कितनी धूप में और सारा सब कुछ थे दे आर डूइंग एन इक्वल अमाउंट ऑफ वर्क फिजिकली एज वेल सो और दूसरी बात खैर ये तो जेंडर स्टीडियो टाइप्स पे बात हो गई कि जो कंसिडर किया जाता है कि वुमेन वुड एंड बी फिजिकली वेरी फिजिकली वेरी लेबर ओरिएंटेड बगैर जब हम बात करते हैं अनपेड लेबर की तो हमारा एक तबका ऐसा भी है जो जिसको कोई ऑफ्स नहीं मिलते जिसको कोई जिसके वर्किंग आवर्स लिमिटेड नहीं है जिसके जिसका लेबर जो है वो बहुत हद तक अननोटिस जाता है और थैंकलेस एंड and yet they are contributing in your economy uh, we think that they are not but they are uh, all of this work uh, any work that is done it does contribute to your economy in one way or the other because these are uh, this is work and uh, we call these women unpaid domestic uh, jo aapka labor hai ye uh, aapki ghar ki khawatin hai ye aapki uh, at all times jo <coughs> खातन जो घर पे जितना भी काम कर रही होती हैं क्योंकि हमारे यहाँ भी तो कल्चर है कि मोस्टली वुमेन आर डूइंग द हाउस वर्क सो ये आपका अनपेड डोमेस्टिक लेबर कहलाता है और ये बहुत अनफॉर्चुनेट है कि आज भी जो है वो डोमेस्टिक वर्क और चाइल्ड बियरिंग के साथ और चाइल्ड रेयरिंग के साथ डोमेस्टिक वर्क भी जो है वो एक औरत की जिम्मेदारी समझा जाता है तो इवन even if a woman is working uh hum ye dekhte hain ke like even though she is working outside eight hours at the home as well the entire responsibility is hers and bahut kam ab kuch trend thankfully shuru hua hai jahan pe men have men are contributing and pehle bhi hota tha but uh, numbers are a bit increasing where men are realizing that uh, the their wives or sisters are working equally outside so they need to contribute a bit as well at home uh, but again uh, the culture is abhi tak uh, even a few even an year back i was listening to this talk somewhere and it was a corporate event talk and uh, somebody was describing her struggles and she was an accomplished woman and she was describing her struggles and she was ex- uh, she was talking about uh, how uh, uh she had been working uh very hard all her life because she had expectations at her sasral she had expectations with her with a family where she would be like you know getting up early in the day and uh, doing all her respons- house house co responsibilities finishing them up and then going to work and again coming back and she very uh, she she told it uh, that it was her accomplishment that she was only able to work all of this on like 3 hours or 4 hours sleep and in that moment it hit me so bad and i felt that uh, that it should not be so uh it should not be considered an accomplishment that a woman is being forced to work uh it 18 to 20 hours with 3 to 4 hours sleep uh on a daily basis and this should not be the price she should be paying for her accomplishments uh and that uh, itself is a barrier for a lot of women because aksar khawatin they do not enter career oriented jobs because unko ye hota hai ki yaar bachon ke sath nahi kar payenge 
या फिर उनको ये होता है कि लाइक वंस वी आर मैरिड लाइक नहीं हो पाएगा बिकॉज देर आर एक्सपेक्टेशन एट द फैमिली एंड दैट वुड स्टॉप अस लाइक अगर वहाँ पे हम फेल कर गए तो ये बड़ा फेलियर होगा और ये एक एज अ सोसाइटी है हमारा फेलियर है रादर देन एन अकम्पलिशमेंट ऑफ अ सिंगल वुमेन ये एज अ सोसाइटी हमारा फेलियर बन जाता है कि हम इतनी अपॉर्चुनिटीज नहीं बराबर की प्रोवाइड कर पा रहे जबकि घर का काम इतना कोई अगर सब लोग बराबर बराबर करें एक बंदा ना कर रहा हो सब लोग बराबर बराबर कंट्रीब्यूट करें तो इतना कोई मुश्किल काम नहीं होता लाइक अगर इक्वली सब लोग उसमें कुछ ना कुछ कंट्रीब्यूट करें रिगार्डलेस ऑफ देयर जेंडर एंड एज एंड व्हाट देयर पोजीशन इज इन द फैमिली तो काम आराम से संभल सकता है एंड दिस इज अ मॉडल दैट हैज बीन फॉलोइंग दैट इज हैपनिंग इन द वेस्ट एज़ वेल फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम एंड आई थिंक लाइक इन इन अ इन अ लॉन्ग way back when the patriarchy had not been uh, such a severe part of our society uh, men were still working uh, at home before as well in uh, 14 year 1400 years ago we have a lot of examples from there from religious perspective as well if you do uh, believe in uh, that particular religion so uh, for me like it's uh, it's it's interesting that we uh, do make an make sure that this domestic labor is not like one person oriented and women have more chances to excel uh, at both ends uh, and uh, it's not considered uh, just uh, they it's not they don't have to work to at two places uh, full time so <clears throat> that being said um, uh, i was discussing all of this last year uh, in somewhere and um, it was uh, it was a it was a british council event and we were discussing it and there were these students in the in the audience and uh, since we have been discussing harassment so much today and uh, this kid just comes up and he's saying about all the other things and then he goes on and says that uh, like my tarbiyat achhi nahi karti to like bachche rapist ban jate and considering this year like this uh this was in this was uh, or th- this year hadn't happened back then but still this was a very alarming thing to hear from a young person's mouth and uh, thankfully before i could respond there was this elderly man in the with the long beard and like you know uh, very well educated and he uh, he stood up and he told him that he uh explained his point of view to the kid and like he very well explained like the the fallacy in his uh, argument and the thought process where he had not challenged the the things that were taught to him <clears throat> and that person also gave like excellent examples he was a professor himself and so was his wife and he gave excellent examples of how they had been equally participating in the household activities and that was amazing to hear like such examples just like uh, are so uh, so optimistic to hear off uh moving on to the next part <clears throat> there have been a lot of studies uh regarding a woman who um uh, who women in leadership positions who have been excelling uh and uh, talking about them we there is a study that found out that uh, female cfos are more profitable and they generated an excess profit of 1.8 trillion uh, over the study horizon and uh, this happened because uh, female executives uh, in comparison to their male peers they um, they drove more value appreciation uh they were they better defended uh, profitability moats and they delivered excess risk adjusted returns for their firms uh but uh this was this mostly happened because uh these women were the best of the best uh, uh to reach a position of leadership for women is harder the opportunity uh lack does not only happen at the place of entering the workforce where like we have barriers at home but it also happens once you have entered the workforce uh, because once you have entered the workforce you are competing with um, a large pool and there are there is an uh, there is an unconscious bias 
which uh, generally leads leads to women being um, considered k uh, they wouldn't be as uh, as uh, uh, they wouldn't be able to perform that well or they would be perceived to be not performing as well so when they are not they, when they're perceived to be not performing that well that is also a hindrance for anybody to place them uh, in a position of leadership because they think that oh if we will uh, even though this person is capable uh, a lot of other people are not considering them as capable and that's why there would be a there would be a gap in their in author in the way they can be more authoritative similarly uh, so these women who did end up at the leadership positions were actually women who were competing with a very large pool and they were like not just best because a lot of ceos they are very good at their work but these women had extra challenges uh which they overcame and hence they were the best of the best and that's when they did eventually uh, gain these leadership positions the stakes were higher for them and they probably worked ha harder and uh, they they had to compete in in an, in a more unadvantageous way so that was something very interesting uh, to see in studies as well <clears throat> another thing is that um uh female mentors are very important uh so as long as you have some mentorship uh it becomes much easier for you to uh, to gain any particular uh place that you want to achieve to if you have seen people who are doing that stuff you it becomes easier for you uh about 83% of women think that it is important to see women in stem um uh, on screen and like you know around them uh and uh, reshma sojani who is the ceo of girls who code it said that uh you can't be what you cannot see and that is very true that female mentorship is so important for women that uh, once even growing up i didn't see a lot of female engineers and that i did find it a, as a hindrance because every time i had to look up to i had to look up to a man and i had to uh i didn't have a lot of uh, even in university a lot of female engineers because the women in general in tech are so few that it becomes harder to find a woman in uh, challenging positions and whom you can keep as a role model so uh moving on to uh another something interesting is the fact uh that uh let me move on to the new slide <laughs> actually not uh i don't think i can hear your questions or like if i can see your comments but i would definitely want to know what do you think uh like a few years ago like what was the composition of women in computing uh and what is the composition now uh, in comparison to men i would like you to write your answers in the comments i would uh, display my answer as well but i would definitely want you to uh, uh mention your comments uh like what would you uh, think would the numbers be hmm so i'll be waiting for your comments uh and uh, but meanwhile uh, since you have your comments uh, already pasted uh, you would be able to see the difference between your comments and uh, the real answer uh, as to what uh, uh, what really the numbers are so tada woman uh, were uh, are around 19% now and they were 37% in 1984 uh that is uh 
that is something uh, huge in my opinion. Uh, that is something um, very interesting uh, because uh, how did that happen? Like in my imagination, we were progressing. We were somehow, uh, you know, moving towards a, a more uh, gender neutral um, gen uh, place in computing but when I see the numbers we have actually kind of declined and uh, not just declined a little but like we have uh, almost we are half of what uh, in composition of what we were before so uh, there is a this strange mystery is tied back to even more mystery mysterious and even more interesting facts and uh, when we uh i'll definitely love to go into more details about it like what happened and how the story unfolded so um in um when we look at uh, the pa at the past uh, events in the com uh, computing history women were a large part of uh, uh of what um, how computer sciences were being um observed in that time if you look at it uh, this is an advert from the past and it says that uh, 20 years ago a girl could be a secretary a school teacher maybe a librarian a social worker or a nurse if into the if uh, into the uh, professions and compete with men usually working harder and longer to earn less pay for the same job now have come the big dazzling computers and a whole new kind of work for women programming um telling the miracle machines what to do and what to do it anything from predicting the weather to sending out billing notices from the local department store so this is an advert uh, ask uh, recruiting women at that time the job that women were doing itself they were called computers as well so it was very interesting that uh that computing was considered uh, as a soft work, as a clerical work at that time, something which was very iterative, something that um, was not very physical, something which, which was very mathematical. And uh, at that time, um, it was considered a woman's job because uh, at that time, men were more interested into building the computer hardware as it had not been, uh, as it was still developing. and. Um, that was considered to be the real challenging job not the mathematical part or computing part or programming part which was at that time considered women's job and that's what happened as well women excelled in uh, in computing and programming at that time uh, the, we always hear of ENIAC electronic and numerical integrator and computer which was the first electronic and programmable computer and the six primary programmers were all women uh, K. McNulty, Betty Jennings, Betty Snyder, Marlin Veskoff, Fran Bialis, and Ruth Lich Lichterman. Uh, they uh, programmed uh, INIAC programs, but uh, very unfortunately, when the uh, computer was launched, they were not even invited to the party. Uh, they were completely sidelined, and it's very hard to dig their names uh, in history and only with time and like you know we were able to find that oh women were doing such things uh, same is the case for um hedy lamar uh, hedy lamar i think you all must have heard about her and hedy lamar has uh, had amazing achievements um in terms of wi-fi she uh, and uh, it took her a hundred years to get into national inventors hall of fame she was a famous actor as well and uh, which is why uh, probably she was just seen as uh, as a pretty face uh, unfortunately um and uh, even though her she is why we have wi-fi honestly uh, but unfortunately we don't even hear her name so what happened then um what happened from 1984 to later? So um, after the 1960s, the software that had been dominated by women evolved into modern software. And the importance of women kind of decreased. The gender disparity and the lack of women in computing from the late 20th century onward has been examined and several factors have seemed to emerge. 
what these factors are. Uh, suddenly, in 1984, when uh, personal computers started coming in, um, computer programming became more prestigious, um, and uh, men started getting into computer programming more, and that's when they uh, women started becoming sidelined. Then there was active gender discrimination for women as well, where a woman would not be taken in uh, into a job because she was a woman. Uh, and she would be sidelined even if she was extremely good. Uh, a, women who were being considered like that you should not be doing it. So they were not entering the profession as well. And the women who were in the profession as uh, already, even they were being discriminated against. And then there was like a branding for boys, like all the computer, uh, all the adverts that, that you see from 1984, they keep, they they uh, show you as like boys playing games on computers or whatever, even little boys, right? So, and uh, always whenever a computer would be bought, it would be put in a boy's room. So women were suddenly distanced from this, um, from this technological advancement and they didn't even have access, let alone um, uh, an opportunity to develop skills. And now suddenly uh, computer programming was suddenly a man's thing to do. And uh, hence, uh, women started having a confidence shake uh, when it came to programming, and they started distance, distancing themselves. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and... Uh, And that would be the end of my talk. Um, I still would like to talk a little about uh, other things, but I would definitely like uh, Ali to see if he has any questions to ask or if there were any comments that he would like to deliver to me. And uh, I think that would be. And last but not the least, I definitely uh, like another woman in tech, uh, which is my mom. Which is, she's a master's in, as well in my talk. Uh, that's really sweet. Well, hello, hi again, Ali. Uh, so, hi. Asking in regards, uh, I think the statistics that you put forward that the amount of women that are in the tech landscape has decreased since the old times. That's really, really surprising for me, considering. You know how much we talk about yeah. equality these days, and that's the reality. Like, yeah, something. and how much scope there is, right? And how many corporates are working into bringing more women in, and despite all the efforts, uh, still we see a decline. It's yeah, it's very really disappointing. Really interesting, considering uh, a lot of Silicon, you know, Silicon Valley companies, the big tech companies. If you look deep into the foot notes for these companies like Google, even Google, mm -hmm. Microsoft, a lot of the founding members of these companies were women, uh, people who were instrumental in making these companies into what they were today. Like Abhi, I think the CEO of YouTube as well. Uh, I yeah. don't remember the name. Yeah, but she was instrumental in bringing YouTube and, you know, bringing it as the platform that it is. In fact, I was reading in an article uh, yeah. recently that she was the one who convinced Google to buy YouTube. And we all know where YouTube is right now. It's a really big <laughs> for Google. Like, you know, yeah. putting in so much ad revenue. And it's really that where you see that, you know, if we include more women in the workspace, you could have even more great ideas like this, even in Pakistan. It's just that it needs more, uh, like Iram was saying as well, like, you know, women also la lack that self-branding. Even I do. Like, um, all of us, like, struggle with, like, branding ourselves. And that also becomes a huge uh, factor in, in terms of us um, going f uh, forward or, like, self-promotion. Like, it, it becomes really hard for us to do. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, you know, a lot of people, they face anxieties, they face a lot of insecurities. And as it yeah. was talking about earlier, imposter syndrome and things like that, and people just making you feel like you shouldn't be too bracket yeah, so movement that can really hurt you. Yeah. And 
uh, honestly we I would love to talk about like uh, maybe like you know one day we'll have like enough to talk about like all the other factors that are so discriminating within uh, not just tech like general opportunities which we lack just because uh, somebody is of a certain class somebody is of a certain race somebody is like of um, suffers from a certain mental health uh, mental health illness, illnesses or anything you know uh, there is just the scope is so um much in terms of uh, the discriminations that happen uh, within an industry yeah there's definitely a lot of factors that play into this uh, you know discrimination and inequality that's happened between the two genders well with that we'll formally conclude your session hamna thank you so much for being here with us for this session yeah Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It was nice being here.